What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So as you know with this whole corona thing that's been happening, for me personally, it's been extremely hard to film videos. I've been trying to work everything out, like where to go, what to do. And I thought it'd be a cool idea to maybe stock the freezer with some fresh fish. Cause you go to the supermarket right now, there is no fresh fish. Everyone's bought it and everything. And this would be a really cool idea to not only do a catch and cook, but to cook up some fresh fish off this jetty. I've been fishing for like the past five days straight, trying to film a video. And I just haven't been catching anything that that's cool enough or awesome enough to actually put in a video and film so I thought I'd upload an old video because I've really been trying to get videos out every Friday and I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't have seen this video anyway oh look at that three massive stingrays right there sitting right there take a look at that I'm not actually too sure what these stingrays are doing right now but wow take a look at them right there there's another little one just over that way. That one's pretty big, and these are what these bull sharks are feeding on here in this canal right here. See, just to show you how calm they are, give that one a little pat. So what I was talking about before I actually got distracted by those stingrays is I've been trying to post weekly videos. I've been doing it for the past like two months or whatever. So I don't want to just like not post a video this week just because I haven't been able to film one. So I've got an old video that you guys, I don't think many of you guys have even seen it. So I thought I'd upload it this week and I'll have a new video out next Friday. But I hope you enjoy the clip and I'll see you guys next week. Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't want to waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, No, I don't want to waste what's left And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways Till my shadow the sun rays and the That was part one, I had so much fun filming that, and that was on Noosa Lombongan. Now, this next video is actually in Bali itself, and what I actually did is I went to the Hidden Canyon Mini Zoo. Now, the Mini Zoo is an absolutely awesome place in Indonesia, and over 12 months ago, I ended up going there, and I didn't really film much, I filmed a couple things, and I always said, if I went back, I was gonna film it all and put it on YouTube. So that's exactly what I did. Now, the first animal that the guy brought out to me was a palm cockatoo. Now, this animal is one of my favorite animals since I started researching it. Like, it's such a cool cockatoo. And the amazing thing is I didn't know that it lived in Australia. It lives in the Cape York, up North Queensland. And when you're an animal person like me and you realize that there's another animal living in your country that you don't know about, you just go crazy. I did so much research about this palm cockatoo after I realized that. So yeah, I'll roll you some clips of it right now and it was just absolutely such an awesome bird. My arm? Yeah. Look at that. Such an awesome species. Oh, you can kiss it as well. Where did these live? Which country? Uh, from uh, Papua Irian Yaya. His name's Agus. Now there are four subspecies of palm cockatoo, one of which owning the title of the largest cockatoo in the whole world and being native to Cape York here in Australia. And they're such a cool bird, they're such an awesome looking species. Now palm cockatoos spend most of their day foraging for fruits and nuts and nesting in tree hollows. And in zoos like this one, like the Hidden Canyon Mini Zoo, they have been known to live over 80 years old. But in the wild, since they're such a rare species and you don't get to see them much, the lifespan of this species is still unknown. And since I found out that this species lived in Australia, I've been wanting to do a trip up to the Cape just to see it. I reckon it'd be so cool seeing a palm cockatoo in the wild. So the next animal that the guy decided to bring out and show me is one that I'm not a big fan of. It was a massive tarantula. It was the third biggest tarantula in the world and his name was Fluffy. Oh, he's getting the big one. Mm. 
I actually really don't like spiders, but take a look at that. Says what name it is on there. So this is the Brazilian salmon pink bird eater spider. As you can see, they're a big spider. And take a look at all those hairs on them. And what they'll do actually, is they'll shake their legs and those hairs will get in your eyes. And they're really irritating if you breathe them in. But take a look at that. That is actually crazy. So believe it or not, this female Brazilian salmon pink bird eater could produce over 2,000 eggs. And within 12 months, those eggs, the spiderlings, why did I just say spiderlings? It's what you call baby spiders, but it just doesn't sound right. The baby spiders could grow over six inches in just a year, which is absolutely a crazy growth rate and makes this species of tarantula even cooler. Can we put it on my head? <laughs> All right, so he's just putting it on my head right now. The Brazilian salmon pink bird eater. Take a look at that. That is so cool. I can't see it right now, but I know it's gonna look off tap. Such a cool looking spider. And shoulder is okay. Yeah, shoulder? Yeah. Who needs a parrot when you can get a bird eating tarantula on your shoulder? Where this one from? From Brazil. Brazil? How they get their name? Brazilian, <laughs> my bad. Then I ask, oh, what do they eat? <laughs> Take a look at that. Brazilian bird eating spider on my shoulder right there. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure last year that one in there was the one that I put on my head, but that one's just another step up. Look, you can see all the snakes in here as well. Take a look at that, that's awesome. Oh, getting the big. There's a pig. Reticulated python? Yeah, albino yeah. python. Reticulated. Albino. So this is the albino reticulated python. Now what these guys do is they're restricted. So what they'll do, they'll wait in ambush, sit there for hours even, wait for a possum or anything like that to come past, strike out, coil around it, and they actually use the muscles in their body to constrict their prey. Last year at this zoo, I was holding a Burmese python and they're commonly mistaken for these reticulated pythons. They're quite similar, and this one's also albino, but different species. Now, reticulated pythons can grow over well over seven meters in length, and being this size, they are one of the few snakes that can actually, and have been known, to prey on humans. Now, although attacks with this species is incredibly rare and you never see it, people have been eaten by this species. So there was a story that was in Indonesia on the Talud Islands, I think, and it was in the early 20th century and a boy was actually eaten by a five and a half meter reticulated python. But as I said before, attacks on humans are incredibly rare. They're nothing to be afraid of. These snakes are such a beautiful animal. And this one at the zoo was so cool as well. So that reticulated python that I was just holding, this is the actual original color. This is the normal color that they normally are. The other one was albino, but take a look at that. Still such a beautiful creature. Got two of them on me at the moment. And last time we were here, I rocked up and this guy threw about 20 of them on my head straight off. It was so cool. I'll take a look at that. Awesome looking snake. I'm tangled up in my bag. <laughs> like a miniature version of an echidna. Hello, cutie. Mm. That is a big blue tongue. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have pet blue tongues when I was little. Never this big though, that is a good size one, that's full grown. So if you guys are ever in Bali, I definitely recommend checking out the Hidden Canyon Mini Zoo. It's just awesome, like you get to see all these creatures, like look at that. And now these blue tongues, right, they use that blue tongue as a defense mechanism. They can't really do much else. So um, when a predator is like, like, whether it be a hawk or something is above it, um, they'll actually flash out that blue tongue, flatten themselves out and make them look really big. So this is a flying, flying fox. fox, same as the ones we've got back in Australia. They're really cute and inquisitive creatures, as you can see. And when you look at them up close, look at their wings. Take a look at that. It's like a different kind of material. I can't even explain it. I'll take a look at that. Curious little guy. There we go, spreading his wings out. Now back in Australia, these guys can carry a lot of diseases, but this one would be fine. Take a look at that, flapping his wings. That's so cool. 
Spider. Look at that. It's like a big baby. I remember we were holding this guy last time we went to the Bali Mini Zoo. And the cool thing about that is that was a year ago today that we were here and now we're back. So this place is halfway between Legian and Ubud, which is where we're headed now. So that should be pretty cool. Look, look over here, big green iguana. Not if you think they should subscribe to my channel. Big male green iguana. What's his name? Nana. Nana. No, surely it can get down. Oh no, is that turtle stuck? I don't know if you can see it, but just right there, just past that moss there, is a little turtle and I've been watching him for about half an hour and he can't swim down at all. I don't know if he's got something wrapped around him that's stopping him, but I'm gonna jump in, grab him, and suss it out because I really don't want this turtle to either starve to death because he can't get food and it's just a baby as well. All right, he's sitting just there. I'm gonna jump on him. I'm not gonna hurt him at all. I missed him. That did not smell good at all. I'm gonna get out and try again. That did not work. I'm literally covered in all of that. That's not good, but I gotta wait for that turtle to come back up. I'm confident that he won't go anywhere because he literally can't swim to the bottom. Oh, I'm just gonna wash off because that creek is not a good creek to jump into. But when I was jumping on that little turtle then, it had a bit of plastic wrapped around it. So I'm pretty sure that's why it wasn't able to swim to the bottom. So I'm gonna keep an eye out. I hate that I missed it. I wish I would've got it so I could get the bit of plastic off, but I tried and I got all this dirty stuff on me for it, but I'll, I'm confident I'll stay down here until I find him again and hopefully I'll be able to get it off. All right, now I'm still on lookout for that turtle. I jumped off that rock there into that area around there, but I'm pretty sure he's still in this vicinity. And I feel that since it did have a piece of plastic on it and it couldn't go down to the bottom, I do have a pretty good chance of spotting him. So since he does have a piece of plastic on him and he's gonna die if I don't get it off him, I'm gonna wait down here for the rest of the day and hopefully I can get him. I'll turn on the GoPro if I end up seeing him again, but you know what, hopefully I'll be able to see him and get that piece of plastic off him because it's someone's fault for leaving the plastic in this creek and now look what it's done to a turtle. But yeah, that's episode two and the final episode of my Bali trip. So I really hope you enjoyed all of these episodes, all two of them. <laughs> but um, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you leave a comment down below, drop a like, subscribe to my channel. And yeah, thank you so much. Follow me on Instagram. I post a heap of different stuff over there, at Miller Wilson. And yeah, I'll see you again in the next adventure.